All right, y'all. So as some, if not most of y'all are aware, I went and finally bought my dream car. It's a 1965. C-code Ford Mustang with a 289. That's a V8. I thought I was gonna get an inline six. I didn't really care, but then the deal came along and it was a really good deal. So I had to take it. <laughs> I've been looking for a long time, for like years. So let's go take a look. There she is. Needs a lot of work, but the bones are good. There's basically just a little rust. The inside's pretty rough. It needs a new interior, which is not hard to do, but as far as the rust goes in the car, uh, it's not too bad. It's got a little spot right here on the door, which I can easily fix as well. Everything under the car looks really good though. Uh, that's why I got this car, is because none of it is rusted out underneath. It was at one time a vinyl top car, and the guy who I bought it from didn't know that. It was basically, there's this trim piece, and I was like, oh, shit, that's vinyl. That's what they use to secure the vinyl top. Also needs a new fuel tank. This one was leaking, even though it doesn't look too bad. Uh, I'm gonna replace this. Shouldn't be too much of a project. Gonna repaint everything. Do the body work, clean up. Also needs a new. Gonna probably replace the hood. Yeah, so there she is, 289. I did preemptively go ahead and order a new carb. This one, looking pretty janky and old and oxidized. So I'm just gonna throw a new one on there. I also got new spark plugs that I'm gonna change. The oil in here looks great. The transmission fluid looks great. Uh, somebody replaced the solenoid recently. I got a new battery for it. Gonna also replace the master cylinder with a dual bowl. So there's a lot of work that's gotta be done, but it's not too much. This car was running like a couple years ago. Uh, the key cylinder, it's there. I just pushed it in, but it looks like somebody tried to drill it out or something gonna redo that this was all repainted like i yeah i guess it started off as a red you know but then somebody went candy apple with it and then somebody painted the interior black at one point so i don't know it's been through some shit. yeah i also got some new bushings for the shifter because the shifter is just so loose it's not even working i got a cool mustang poster with it or sign I mean, come on, how cool. Yes! That's awesome! I'm gonna try and get it running before I like change the oil and stuff. The oil looks really good in it. I think it was run not that long ago. First things first, I knew that the key cylinder was messed up on this car. It looks like somebody tried to dig it out. It wasn't working or something. Anyways, it needs to be replaced. So, ordered a replacement for it. Look at that ugly mess. It's terrible. Here's the old cylinder though. You know what I just realized? There is no thermostat in the thermostat housing. Yeah, that can't be good. Look at that mess. The rose. Wow, just realized I wasn't filming that. So I decided before I put the new thermostat on that I would take this hose off. The hose that goes to the thermostat, to the water pump. Well, it's completely corroded unfortunately and I don't know if you can see there with the shadow but the water pump is like full of crud and rust and this piece is all rusted off yeah and what's weird is I can see it looks like somebody's 
done some work and or replaced some stuff on it before. So that means I think I may have to replace the water pump. <sighs> yeah. All right, so that was dumb. I should have recorded this because it was craziness. So there is the heater hose fitting, which is a 90 degree, it comes out like that the heater hose and it's angled back that way actually what i did is i basically uh i took a hacksaw and then a dremel and cut the little 90 degree spout off of it and then i put an 18 millimeter socket on it and was able to break it free because i could not break it free with a wrench to save my life it was really craziness so i figured that was the only way because it was probably rusted out due to the thermostat housing all being rusted I use a vapor rust like religiously, and this is their thermo cure that they make, which you put into the radiator, and it's supposed to clean out your whole like water system within your car. I'm gonna use that, hoping it works. It has really good reviews. Also got a new water pump. Gonna replace that as well uh, with this Gates water pump. It was super cheap actually. Got it off Amazon for like. I don't know, 28 bucks or something like that. So had good reviews. We'll see what happens. I've got these two, got this. I got tons of extra hose. But anyways, that's where we are with it. So now I can start just putting everything back together, which is great, except I gotta get a new fitting for this, which I'm not worried about. Um, easy peasy. This basically is your heater um, fitting. And look how gross and gnarly that is. Oh. I'm scared about what's gonna come out of there after I use the thermo cure. Like so much doo-doo water. Gross. I basically got everything kind of pulled off and ready to go. I'm gonna pull off the water pump. It's the first time I've done this on this car or on a Ford Mustang, so you're in it with me. Uh, yeah, this one's really bad. It needs to be replaced. I'm also gonna take the opportunity to clean up things around it while I've got it pulled off, like the timing chain cover. It's pretty gross. There's lots of RTV on it. And also gonna clean up all this aluminum, these mounts, everything, because I gotta pull the uh, power steering as well. All right, now I can't take credit for this because I saw it uh, on another YouTube channel that I watch a lot and I cannot remember the guy's name, but he's awesome and he's got a lot of awesome Mustang stuff. But anyways, he had a changing out a water pump video and made this little type of cardboard draw out thing. I made it off of the new water pump here, traced it, punched all the holes through uh, the corresponding parts and that way I can keep track of the bolts. Uh, I bought new bolts to go with it, but I figured I would use the old bolts as a reference. Also, in case the new bolts didn't work out, um, I could still recycle and use the old bolts. So, let's pop this sucker out. I did an automotive etching primer um, and then I went with the uh, enamel primer on top of the etching primer because you got to do something on top of that etching primer. I did the regular high performance enamel primer and then the high performance um, enamel and gloss black. Uh, I just had these two lying around so I decided I'd use them since it was just a radiator fan. All right here I've got the thermostat. I've got some more water pump and thermostat housing gasket uh, material. And I'm basically just gonna put that on this guy to seal it off so I can 
connect that in. I'm gonna do this without the thermostat in it and then pull it off and replace the gasket after. I'm not worried about that because I wanna clean the system with Thermocure. Uh, so I'm gonna leave the thermostat out for now. Super cheap to get new bolts for this. We're just gonna do a little bit of this gasket around the outside edge here. And then we'll pull it off later again after we do like clean the whole system. But for now, I just wanna get this on and sealed decently. There we go. And then put just a touch on this side because we want it to stick. And also gonna do a little bit of this. Loctite uh, anti-freeze. So that way, you know, we take these suckers back out. I just went in and replaced the thermostat housing. Already got a new gasket coming for that, so I'm not worried about taking that off again and replacing that and then just cleaning it up. I'm just doing this uh, without the thermostat in there so I can clean out the system because there's a lot of rust and scale buildup. All right, hey y'all, don't judge my crazy hair. Just woke up. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the fuel tank out of the Mustang. I'm gonna finish draining the fuel. I pumped most of it out, but there's the fuel nut right there, which we're gonna take off. Okay, well that was surprising. I guess I pumped all the fuel out. Wow, I figured there was at least a little bit in there because it was leaking a tiny bit, but I guess it's just on the other side of the tank. So there's not much in there if there is. Uh, so yeah, we can go ahead and just start taking this sucker out. install the fuel tank I pretty much uh, took a hammer and dolly to each one of these little spots because they were all like bent up and everything and just kind of wanted to get them flattened out as much as possible I'm gonna spray paint these with just a little bit of like black primer uh, just to cover any of that exposed metal I got this guy from CJ Pony it was an awesome deal uh, it came with everything I needed just a replacement tank. Uh, it's in amazing shape, brand new. Um, also, came with all these goodies. You know, all the fittings for it, new screws, port gasket, the whole assembly here for like fuel gauge measuring and all that. I need to test it to make sure it's running right, and then we'll be good to go. Uh, I'm going to hit the fuel line with some carb and parts cleaner and basically just blow out the fuel line so that way it gets any like nasty debris or dust or just build up, uh, just general just gunk, rust or build up out of the fuel line before we connect the new fuel tank. I'm just going to take this, wrap it around, this, and then take a rubber band and rubber band it. Bunch of times. That way the air can get through. All right, I went ahead and pulled the uh, fuel line off of here as well. This is the one that goes into the fuel pump. So I pulled it and I'm gonna take the straw of the carb cleaner and put it down in there.
All right, so now that we got the fuel lines all cleaned up, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to test this little guy. Basically, the, how we do that is we hook our digital multimeter here and we set it to, it's already set to ohms, turn it on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna touch one end to our ground, so ground the plate, and then another end to this. And you'll see it read. You should see it start to empty. Cool. As we bring the float down, you can see we drop down to around 75. That's good. So we know our fuel sending unit is good. There's a special way you gotta put it in though. So, tell you what I did. I got a little Marvel Mystery Oil, a little oil pump can from Harbor Freight, like five bucks, These things are great. It's got a little bendy tube on it, so you can get it into tight places and squirt it wherever. And then what I did is I squirted about two to three pumps into each uh, cylinder. I took all the spark plugs out and I put a pump into each cylinder and the reason i did that is because the engine itself turning it was nearly impossible and even getting it to spin it just sounded like it was struggling now the uh, motor turns super super easily not a single problem way easier now so what i'm gonna do so i don't hydrolock the engine is i'm gonna keep all the spark plugs out try spinning it over uh, remotely seeing if I can get this sucker to start up letting it spit out all the extra Marvel mystery oil before I put spark plugs back in I'm also gonna check for spark too one thing I'm gonna have to do is I basically went down the street to this like old-school car shop and they were like it sounds like you need a new starter so what I'm gonna do is check the starter because they tested my battery for me which is totally fine but I am about to pull the starter from the car. It's just two bolts, so should be easy peasy. They have remanufactured ones like down the street at O'Reilly's. Hopefully that's all it is. Also gonna probably drop a new solenoid in there at the same time, because I figured why not if I'm doing the starter. We'll see, let's pull this sucker out. On these, the starter's down here. It is under the engine on the passenger side. It's bolted with two bolts. Okay, so funny story, this bolt was barely even, oh, there it goes, it's barely even attached. So, fantastic. There it is, got it. Looks like somebody might have put some anti-seize on here at one point, but bolts need some help that's bad oh there it is okay let's check it all right yep so it looks like the bendix is fucked up the spindle this should not be spinning both ways all right so this is pretty awesome i put in an order like two days ago a day or two ago from summit racing for some parts and the whole order pretty much already got here with the exception of something that's being shipped from the manufacturer so amazing i got this ac delco starter to replace my old starter which is over there
All right, so I've got like about nine minutes of uh, footage left, uh, or space on the card left. I'm gonna hook up some gas to this sucker and try and get her rolling. Then what we're gonna do, squirt a little bit of fuel. There we go. Moment of truth. So I think the problem here is it's wanting to kick over, but the carb is just done. It's bad news. I've got gas leaks all over. The gasket on that is shot. So I'm gonna throw in a new carb. I've got a new carb for it. So um, shouldn't be a problem. And then I should be able to just crank it right up uh, with the key because it was turning over. So I think I figured out what the problem was. In regards to the key, um, not wanting to kick over, it was the neutral safety switch. So it was in neutral, I put it in park uh, and was able to turn it. So next step, carb replacement. We're learning here, we're learning. All right, so I think that's where we're gonna leave it today. Thank you all for tuning in and watching me work on this new project. I know it's different from, you know, guitars and whatnot, but it'll be super fun and it's something that's a little different and that I'm really into. So stay tuned, still got a lot of guitars in the works, uh, motorcycle build stuff, now car stuff. Go ahead and if you haven't already, like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you later. All right, bye.